Hi guys. In this video we're taking a look at introducing parametric equations, working with parametric equations, examples, and then we'll finish with a summary. So what are parametric equations? We are familiar with the idea that we can use equations to represent graphs. For example, we can have a line y is equal to 3x plus 4, and we can graph it on a pair of axes. Similarly, we can have a circle x minus 5 all squared plus y minus 2 all squared is equal to 64. Consider the equation of a circle with centre at 0, 0 and radius 4. So the radius is 4 and because it is centred at the origin, it's going to have an equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 16. We can model how x and y are varying independently in terms of a third variable t. We can consider the x and the y values for different values of a third variable t. So for different values of the variable t, we can directly look at x and y individually. Equations written in terms of a third variable are called parametric equations. The parametric equations corresponding to the above situation are x is equal to 4 lots of the cosine of t, and y is equal to 4 lots of the sine of t. This is an example of parametric equations. We can see that x and y can be individually found in terms of the third variable t. And we have our two main variables in terms only of t. So how do we work with parametric equations? So far, we have been using the variables x and y to model the equations of graphs. Again, as another example, we may have the straight line y is equal to 1 half x plus 3, as well as the circle x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. These equations are known as Cartesian equations. Further examples of Cartesian equations are x multiplied by y is equal to 2, y is equal to x plus 2, and x squared plus y minus 3 all squared is equal to 36. These are all called Cartesian equations. This is because they only have x and y involved. There is a direct relationship between x and y. However, parametric equations express x and y separately in terms of a third variable known as a parameter. So consider the parametric equations x is equal to 2t squared, and correspondingly y is equal to 3t. We have the variables x and y, and then we have the parameter t. Alternatively, consider the parametric equations x is equal to 2 lots of the cosine of theta and y is equal to 2 lots of the sine of theta. These are also parametric equations because x and y are separately in terms of a parameter theta. And so we have the variables x and y and the parameter theta. Consider a circle with centre 0, 0, the origin, and radius r. So here we have the value of r, due to the radius being r, and the circle being centred at the origin. To form parametric equations of the circle, we can choose the parameter to be the angle between the radius and the x-axis. Consider here the radius, and then consider the angle between the radius and the x-axis. This is the angle theta, we'll call it as our parameter, here. Using the definitions of sine and cosine, we can express x and y in terms of the angle. So let's say we have our point on the circle which has coordinates x and y in general. Then the value of x is shown here 
and the value of y is shown here. Our radius r is the length here. Now we can use right angle trigonometry because here we have a right angle triangle. We have that for a right angle triangle, the sine of theta is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. This gives us that the sine of the angle theta in our triangle is equal to the value of y divided by the value of r. These are the opposite and hypotenuse respectively. And by rearranging, we get that y is equal to r multiplied by sine theta. Similarly, the cosine of theta is given by the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And therefore we get that the cosine of the angle theta is equal to this time the value of x divided by r. And we can rearrange this equation to give us that x is equal to r cosine theta. Therefore, we can generalize the parametric equations of a circle with center 0, 0 and radius r. The parametric equations are x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. In other situations, we may be asked to find parametric equations of curves that are not circles. For example, we can be asked to find parametric equations for the curve y is equal to x squared, which is not a circle. This can be done by choosing x to be a function of an arbitrary parameter. This is converting from having a Cartesian equation, y is equal to x squared, to a set of parametric equations. Quite simply, we could let x be equal to, as a random example, e to the power of t. And then correspondingly, since y is equal to x squared, we would have that y is equal to e to the power of 2t, using our index rules. Or, very simply, we could let x be equal to just t, and then y would be equal to t squared. These are also parametric equations for the Cartesian equation y is equal to x squared. One way to convert a parametric equation back into a Cartesian equation is by substitution. This time we're going from having our parametric equations to having a Cartesian equation. Let's say we have the equations x is equal to t plus 1 and y is equal to t squared minus 1. We can rearrange our equation x is equal to t plus 1 in order to make t the subject. And as a result, we get that t is equal to x minus 1. And then we can substitute this t into our equation for y. And so we get that y is equal to our t, which is x minus 1. Because we have a t squared in our equation for y. And then we subtract 1. And if we were to expand and simplify, we would get that y is equal to x multiplied by x minus 2 is our Cartesian equation. We have found the Cartesian equation for x and y from the parametric equations by substitution. However, another way to convert a parametric equation into a Cartesian equation is to use, for example, when appropriate, trigonometric identities. The important trigonometric identities are that sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1, as well as 1 plus tan squared theta is equal to sec squared theta, and finally, 1 plus cot squared of theta is equal to cosec squared of theta. When converting the parametric equation of a circle into a Cartesian equation, we use the Pythagorean identity involving sine and cosine, i.e. our first identity, sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals 1. Again here, we are taking parametric equations and converting back into a Cartesian equation for x and y. Let's say we have, as we found before, the parametric equations for a circle corresponding to x is equal to r cosine of theta and y is equal to r sine of theta. Then we can solve these two equations 
for cos of theta and sine of theta respectively. And so we get that the cos of theta is equal to x divided by r. And similarly, the sine of theta is equal to y divided by r. Now, hopefully we can see that in this case, it is appropriate to use our equation sine squared of theta plus cos squared of theta equals 1, because if we do so, then we'll get an equation which does not have our parameter theta in it. And so we have our equation sine squared of theta plus cos squared of theta is equal to 1. And therefore, by substituting our results for sine of theta and cos of theta, we get our y divided by r all squared for our sine squared of theta. And then we plus the x over r all squared for the cosine squared of theta. And then this is equal to 1. This gives us, by expanding and multiplying up both sides by r squared, y squared plus x squared is equal to r squared. And just for illustration, we can swap around the x squared and the y squared, and we get x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. We should be familiar with this Cartesian equation since it is the circle with radius r centered at the origin. Let's take a look at some examples. Our first example asks us to find a parametric equation of the curve with equation xy equals 3. Our first step is to find a parameter to define x. We could, for example, let x be just t. This is our parameter. Our second step is to substitute x into the Cartesian equation to form a parametric equation for y. We have that x multiplied by y is equal to 3, and by rearranging, we get that y is equal to 3 divided by x. And then we have our parametric equation for x, which is that x is equal to t. And therefore, we get that y is equal to 3 over t by using this parametric equation for x. Our last step is to write down the parametric equations. We have that x is equal to t and that y is equal to 3 over t. Our second example asks us to find the Cartesian equation of the parametric equations x is equal to 6t and y is equal to 9t squared. Our first step is to rearrange x is equal to 6t to obtain an expression for the parameter t in terms of x. We have our equation x is equal to 6t, and this is the simplest equation to rearrange to get t is equal to x divided by 6. If we were to rearrange the other equation, we'd have to square root. Our second step is to substitute the parameter t into the equation with y to obtain an equation involving x and y only. We have our parametric equation for y, which is that y is equal to 9t squared. And so we can substitute our expression for t, and we get that y is equal to 9 multiplied by x over 6 all squared. By expanding, we get that y is equal to 9x squared divided by 36. And therefore, by cancelling, we get that y is equal to x squared over 4. And so our last step is to write down the Cartesian equation, and we just found it. y is equal to x squared over 4. We have successfully removed all of the t's. Our last example asks us to find the Cartesian equation of the curve with parametric equations x is equal to tan theta and y is equal to 3 cosine of theta. Our first step is to recall the trigonometric identity involving the tan of theta and the sec of theta so we can link the parametric equations via sec of theta equals 1 over cosine of theta. We have the trigonometric identity 1 plus the tan squared of theta is equal to the sec squared of theta. And this is nice because we can use the fact that sec of theta is equal to 1 over the cosine of theta. And therefore, our second step is to use the definition of sec of theta in terms of y. We have that y is equal to 3 lots of cos theta. And since cos of theta is equal to 1 over sec of theta, we get that y over 3 which is our expression for the cosine of theta, is equal to 1 divided by the sec of theta. 
This gives us by rearranging that the sec of theta is equal to 3 over y. Our third step is to substitute sec of theta and tan of theta into the identity to find a Cartesian equation. We have our equation 1 plus tan squared of theta is equal to sec squared of theta. Now we have that the tan of theta is equal to x by the definition of x in terms of parametric equations and we just found that the sec of theta is equal to 3 over y. And therefore we can substitute in and we get that 1 plus our x squared from the tan squared of theta is equal to 3 over y all squared. And so we get that 1 plus x squared by expanding is equal to 9 over y squared. And therefore by multiplying we get that y squared multiplied by 1 plus x squared is equal to 9. This is our Cartesian equation for x and y. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level math resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap and smiley face and together let's make A-level maths a walk in the park.